is he not even thinking about it? Like, does he not even know that he's doing it? Because <laughs> um, you, you met him, right? You met him after you wrote yeah. the book, Win Bickley. So what's he we, like it, privately, one-on-one, or whoever, like in less public setting without a camera on versus in a public setting? Because that would tell a lot. Yeah, so the first thing you need to know, obviously people don't talk about the details of conversations with presidents, but I'll right. give you the, the basic flavor of it. Um, in person, he is... Uh, completely normal in every way that you'd want a person to be normal. So if, you, if you're watching him in public and say, hey, he's acting crazy, is he like that in person? The answer is no, no. I mean, he's very much like you see him in, in public. He, is, he doesn't have like some extra personality or something. But he's, he's got super charisma and his social skills are just off the chart. Like you stand in the room with him and just everything disappears. But here's the, here's the amazing part. He's the president of the United States, commander in chief of the greatest military force of all time. And he invites me into the Oval Office. And, and I'm sitting there. And for the entire time I was there chatting with him, he gave me the impression that he didn't care about anything in the world except what I was saying. Now, think about that. So my experience of it was he was not distracted. He was he was completely focused on me and what I was saying. He had he had smart questions to to get me to say interesting things, and it's just a whole different you know vibe than what he does in, in public. Very very warm, very personal um, social skills just off the charts. And by the way, I, I think you know his family has that too. I got to meet Ivanka. Yeah, you know, probably runs in the family. Just they have amazing social skills. Anyway, so there's that. Uh, the question you asked me about meeting him in person was, oh, if he does it reflexively or he's using technique. And I actually talked to him about that. I won't tell you exactly what he said or I said, but I'll give you the, give you the flavor of it. Um, and I'll use me as an example. So I learned hypnosis. I've studied persuasion for years. Right. But when I'm talking, I'm not conscious, typically, I'm not conscious of using technique. It's just something you learn that becomes part of the way you convey things. So if I talk visually more than other people, it's not because I thought about it at the time. It's just something I've learned over the years, and it's just automatic after a point. It's sort of like when you first learn to type, you have to think where the letter is and then put your finger on it. But if you learn it enough, you're just looking at the screen, and, and words are just appearing on the screen, and you're not conscious of the process. So the quick answer is, he, uh, I'm sure he's not conscious of the process. That part I, I can say confidently. But he does have a, a strange and wonderful history that his uh, pastor or minister, I never know the right word, of his church when he was a kid, his family would go to a church with uh, Norman Vincent Peale, yeah. who, who was not only his minister, by great coincidence, but also the most famous author of um, The Power of Positive Thinking. Now, the power of positive thinking, I would say, is a branch of persuasion. You know, it's not the whole persuasion ball, but it's a it's a big old part of it. And you see that technique in Trump all the time. So I think that he may not have been aware of learning it per se, but he had it modeled in front of him by the most famous effective practitioner of all time. In fact, Norman Vincent Peale was so effective that he was accused by his critics in the day of being a, a secret hypnotist. They were like, mm. are you a hypnotist? Because he was so good at it. So when you see Trump um, talking about how the economy will be great, and even with the coronavirus and all this, you can see that the echoes of Norman Vincent Peale you know, through the ages, because he was so powerful. They, and by the way, uh, I should say that Norman Vincent Peale was one of my biggest influences, too. And people always comment that I seem too optimistic for the situation. Mm -hmm. And it's probably not a coincidence. I mean, I think I might be naturally optimistic, but I learned it and, and incorporated it. And I have consciously over my life said, OK, try to try to think of this as positive. What's what's the upside? Yeah. And so, so train myself to do that somewhat automatically now. So I think that he's picked up a whole bunch of techniques. He's negotiated. He wrote the he wrote the book, The Art of the Deal. Uh, well, he, uh, he had a ghostwriter, but, you know, he at least was very familiar with the topic, of course. Yeah. So I think that um, between the fact that negotiating is his brand, 
and he's done a lot of it. And then you add that, the Norman Vincent Peale stuff and his natural talent. I think you just end up being a good salesperson, you know, putting all those things together. Yeah, I mean, you as a hypnotist and being able to reverse engineer a lot of these persuasion techniques, I imagine you picked up infinite loads. Like it was for you, it was like, I'm sure you were so visual and observant about every single thing that he was doing when he was meeting yeah. you in a private place, right? Oh, uh, well, I wasn't wasn't really thinking of, that, uh, of it in those terms. We were just having a conversation, so I was sort of concentrating on just what we were talking about. Um, but he's he definitely has the whole package. So if you ask me, did he get to be president by luck, I would say no, even though there are lots of smart people who say it was just luck. He just got there by luck. I'm like, no, that is a lot of skill, a lot of skill.